Let's take a look at solving equations. When you solve an equation, you find the number that you can place in instead of the variable to make it work or to make it true. Let me give you an example of what our goal is here first. Okay, let's see if 7 can be put in and make this sentence true. Instead of x, I'm going to erase the x and I'm going to put a 7. Now, does 3 times 7 minus 12 equal 9? That's what I'm asking. Well, 3 times 7 is 21, and 21 minus 12 does equal 9. So putting in 7 makes this sentence true, so we say that 7 is a solution to the equation. Now, I don't want you to think any number will make that work. Let's try putting a 5 in instead of x. Well, erase the x and put 5. And does 3 times 5 minus 12, well, 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus 12 is 3. No way. 3 doesn't equal 9. So 5 is not a viable solution. In fact, most numbers are not viable solutions. In this equation, there's only one number, and we found out that it was 7, that magic number that makes the equation work. Let's look at another one. Now sometimes you're going to have more, more than one occurrence of a variable in an equation, but the solution to it will still make it true. For instance, let's check to see if 0 is a solution to this equation. We'll have to put in 0 not just for the x, but for every occurrence of the x. Since the x occurs twice, we put it in twice. Now 3 times 0 is 0, and 9 times 0 is 0. And if I multiply those and add, I see that it makes the equation work, because 12 does equal 12. OK, so 0 is the one and only solution to this equation. Let's look at another one. Let's put 7 in for both occurrences of x here and see if it is a solution to the equation. Well, let's see. 2 times 7 and 14 plus 7. Well, that looks like an awful lot. Nope, it doesn't work. The left side doesn't equal the right side. You're way off. I say you're way off this time, so 7 is not a solution to this equation. Now I'd want to come up with some method whereby we can find the solution now that we know what it means to be a solution. Typically you're going to be given the equation and they're going to ask you what x needs to be to make it true. Now here's an equation. What plus 6 equals 8? Well, you can probably do that one in your head. x has to be 2. That was pretty easy. 2 makes this equation true, so it is the solution to the equation. But what I want to show you in this example is it's way easier once we have x, as you can see, by itself. If x is by itself, and earlier it had a 6 next to it, so we didn't know what it was. But once we have x by itself, such as x equals 2, we can just read what x is, can't we? And that's going to be our goal. Now in this problem, you can't do it in your head, perhaps. So we want to get that goal of getting x, quote, by itself. It's not by itself, so I ask myself, who's keeping it from being by itself? Oh, I can't take it anymore. Hang in there. We're going to have to get it by itself. And in order to get it by itself, whatever we do to the left side of this equal sign, we're going to have to do to the right side, because what we have here is a giant scale. The equality is like a giant scale. Whatever you do on the left side, you have to do on the right side. So, on the left side, I'm going to get rid of that 6.5. It's a plus 6.5 by subtracting a 6.5. Well, if I do it on the left, I have to do it on the other side to keep the scale even. Now, on the left side, 
they'll cancel out and I'll get my goal which is to get X by itself. What happened? On the right side 8.3 minus 6.5 I get 1.8 and son of a gun if you'll notice X is by itself and I have the answer or the solution to this equation. You could put 1.8 back in and it would be the one and only solution to this equation. Let's solve this equation by getting, and the variable isn't always x, sometimes it's a, sometimes it's y. The point is we're always going to try, try and get the variable by himself. And we're going to ask ourselves who's keeping him from being by himself. In this case, it's that 7. 23 is completely on the other side, so he's not the troublemaker. 7's the troublemaker. So I'll treat this like a scale, and whatever I do on the left side, I'll do on the right side. On the left side, I'm going to subtract a 7 to get rid of that plus 7. Of course, I'll have to do it on the right also, and let's see what we get. Nicely, the 7's will go away, and I'll have an A on the left side by itself. I have to do a little computation on the right. Doing the subtraction, I get the solution. A equals 16. I know that that's the answer because once I've gotten the letter by itself, I have the solution. Now I can certainly, and I should certainly, take that solution and put it back in and see if it works. And son of a gun, 16 plus 7, putting 16 in instead of A into the original equation, 16 plus 7, does in fact equal 23. So you should get 100 on all these tests because you should be checking by putting that solution back in to see if it in fact works. Now in this case, we want to get x by itself. Who's keeping it from being by itself is a minus or negative 14. Remember again, whatever you do on the left, you have to do on the right. In this case, the appropriate thing to do on the left to get rid of the negative 14 is to add a 14. Of course, if I do it on the left, I have to do it on the right. Let's figure, uh, finish our computations. We get rid of those and we get our x. And on the right side, I'll add them up. And the answer is, in fact, 53. And I can put it back into the original equation instead of x. And 53 minus 14 does, in fact, equal 39. So you have the one and only solution. Now I want to perform this check one more time so you can see exactly what I mean by checking to see if a solution really is the solution. I'm going to take 53 that I think is the answer and I'm going to put it in instead of x in the original equation and 53 minus 14 does equal 39 and, and if it makes it true then I have the right answer. 39 does in fact equal 39. Hey, great, so you should be checking every one or sissy on you. Okay? Let's go practice. Do the homework.